Okay, I'm not going to use the tripod. And yes, it's going to get a little squirmy for those of you who get ill. Uh, let's see. Here is the top of the cart, the spinning cart. Well, I made it a spinning cart. It was not like that before I bought it. This has got Tattered Angels and Seven Gypsy Sprays in here. Down below are, are the Daddy Vans, Dilutions Paints, and the Viva, what do they call them? Inca Gold type stuff. In the bottom is a mismatch of junk, except for, the, I love these old test tubes that have the buttons in them. I don't know what to do with them, but I love them. I think they look so cool. Empty containers that I picked up over the years that I can't bear to part with because they're in unusual shapes. I have two or three of the hearts. Um, these are, this is plastic from, I think, Michael's. Let me look on here. Yes, it is. And these are alphabet stamps. But I like the way they look in the jar. Then there's gelatos. There's more of those blocks from Dollar Tree to make the flip, flipping photo blocks. Man, that's a mouthful to say. With those. And there's a third heart. And then we're back to the box of toothpicks and the buttons. Over here on the side. Let me back up a little bit. Is the plastic container that I think I got this from Tuesday morning. I don't think this is a Linus container. I'm not really sure. I, I've had it so long I can't remember. All right, so this has my bling in it. I did try to put this stuff in a drawer, but it did not work because I could not open the drawer. There was so much in there, and then I couldn't see what was in the drawer because it all stacked up. So this is how I did it. I did some of them I combined the colors because I only had like one or two little cards of red or of orange so I put them in with the red and the orange yellow and gold same type thing I only had a few of one and lots of the other and decided to do it that way all the gemstone type stuff blue what's this one is this one pink pink black white purple and this one is miscellaneous uh, after the purple wait this is the one miscellaneous is those um, metallic buttons, sticky buttons, and then the ones that had the prints on them, things that have like extra printy stuff on them, that kind of stuff, stickers. So that's what's in there. And then here are the number 10 size legal envelopes because I could not get them in a drawer. There's so many of them and I could not close the drawer. I did try to put them in a drawer, but it's not going to work. And I will use these up and hopefully this will be gone and I can use this container for something else. Now the container says $4.99 on it. I think I got this at Tuesday morning. Alright, so let's move down to the first set of drawers. This is washi tape. Oh wait, let me explain to you what this is. This looks like 5,000 layers. This is a shadow box and I needed a nice flat surface. So what I did was I took the shadow box because I wasn't using it, turned it upside down. This is a Lazy Susan from a cooking... Uh, cooking store and I just set this on the Lazy Susan so that's what makes it turn it did not come as a turntable yeah it did not come as a turntable from Hobby Lobby alright so now the drawers this is washi tape and I have a decent amount of washi tape probably not as many as some of you guys and way more than some others but I bought these little one dollar bins these little plastic uh, baskets from Dollar Tree and I tried to keep light colors kinda light colors together there's greens and aquas and that kind of stuff in the back and then I could not fit one of those long skinny things in here so I just took the silver and the gold and put them along here and they're just kinda loosey-goosey the other side is more washi tape See, I could not fit that in because I had a larger bin in the back. This one was a larger bin in the other drawer. So I could not fit one of these in here. And if I put three of these side by side, I still could not as get as much washi tape in them as if I did it this way. I did try, but it doesn't work so well. So here's the rest of my washi tape. These are mini book covers. These are book covers that I do not have. I say that, yeah. There's nothing inside these guys. I just made them because I like the art of making and sewing the books together. Don't really have a knack for putting stuff in them. Uh, but, but see, they're just covers. There's nothing, they're empty covers. Covered with paper, ready to go to have something sewn inside them. This one has the kind of button thing that you can wrap around it on either side. Very dark. 
Anyway, so these are just empty things right here. That's what's in there. This side is my fastener drawer. I think everybody needs kind of a fix-it junk drawer. This is because I have a pegboard system. And when I want to hang something up, I want to make sure I can find all the doodads that go to it. So I made this a fastener drawer. The command hook stuff and the glue stuff for these things are in here. Drywall hangers in the medicine uh, pill bottle. These came with the dryer that's on the back wall. What's down there? Hole punches and punches. I do not have a lot of punches. And I choose to put them in a drawer because I don't have any wall space or my wall space is fast decreasing. So I decided to put them in a drawer. I just don't have a lot of punches, so it works for that. Down below that are the smaller punches. And that's basically, I think that's all the punches I have. I'm not a punch person. Let's see, down here is quilling supplies. There's paper, there's a cork board. There are things like this where you put your pattern in a, it's a cork board and it has a gridded pattern on it. It's covered up with plastic and you stick your stick pins in it. So I got a couple of those in here. I if I can get it back in there without using two hands. Yeah, it's gonna be tricky. And she got it. Okay. Um, then there's forms. There's two containers in here to hold quilling tools, glue, different size of quilling things that are in progress. I have two of those. And this is a kit of some sort, so on and so forth. Just miscellaneous quilling items. Down here is miscellaneous quilling paper and paper projects that are half finished, a third finished, some that I need to, to put onto the rack but don't have a bag anymore. I don't know why I dumped them out of the bag. Can't or I have the bag, can't find the top, have the top, can't find the bag, you know. Bottom is my Xyron, my ATG gun, my calculator, my scale, my large stamp cleaner. What else is in there? Xyron refill, glue gun, and Japanese punch tool. This is my chipboard drawer for large pieces of chipboard. Um, I put them in here so that when I'm ready to make something, I have it. This is also file folders, product, you know, the backs of product things. They're those, those uh, cubes that I got, I'm getting rid of. Home Space Solutions from Michaels, the cubes. This is plastic bags. These are not garbage bags. These are the gallon Ziploc bags, the jewelry Ziploc bags for small pieces of jewelry because I had a um, Etsy store and I needed to store earrings in them or small pieces of jewelry. So that's all my bags in there in case I need them. And I've used this, these two drawers often. Here are acrylic paints, which I don't use a lot of, but I seem to have accumulated quite a bit. I'd like to get rid of them, so I'm trying to use them up in jelly printing as much as I can and start maybe with something else. I don't know. These are Bot Ephemera from Seven Gypsies Canvas Court. Uh, there's also these heavy type ones that are made some kind of really heavy duty chipboard. It's not wood because you can bend it a little bit, but it's some kind of a heavy duty chipboard. Came on a, a punch out thing that's a 12 by 12 and I picked it up a Tuesday morning. These are paper embellishments that I made. The rest of this stuff is stuff that I purchased online for swaps. And then I printed them out and saved the images so that I can cut them out when I needed them. Whoops. This drawer is my magnets and fuse tool. There's my fuse tool with the stand, the blades, and there's, I also have a wood burning tool in there, but I put them all in the same little basket. These little baskets come in very handy from the Dollar Tree. Here are different magnets that go on my magnet board above by the light switch. Then the back basket has more magnets, rolls of magnets, little tiny button magnets, rare earth magnets. And we're back to the mini book covers. We did that. Okay. Let's see. Let's go to the top one. This is the set of three drawers that are stacked up on another set of three drawers. So these are my empty books. These are books where I put some signatures in them, made covers, and never put any signatures in them. I like making the outsides. Don't necessarily follow through on putting stuff on the inside, but I like making them. 
So that's that. Then these are oodles and oodles of napkins, and it's so full, I can't get the drawer open. There we go. Tons and tons of napkins, of which may be leaving because I just don't do a lot of stuff with napkins. I can't see having a huge collection of napkins because I just don't really use them. And I hate mashing them up, but it's the only way to get back in there. Ooh. Next one are what I call art envelopes. These are the envelopes that I painted on, stamped on. They're ready to go in the mail to someone. You know, just the small size brown envelopes. And then there's white envelopes. Some stamps in there. Let me scoot that over. Okay, don't scoot then. Well, son of a gun. Let's just put you over here. All right. This is Fun Foam. I rarely, rarely use it, but I always find some cool and fun foam things. They look like corks, but they're fun foam. I use them once in a while, but not as much as other people, and I have tons more than I will ever use. Here are magic stars. There are a bazillion plastic Ziploc bags. This is why I have a Ziploc bag drawer, is because of this stuff. And I've got large stars, small stars, dark stars, light stars, fat stars, skinny stars. Flat stars, fat stars. You name it, I got it. Bottom one has rolled paper ornaments that are in progress. Rolled paper shapes that are meant to be meant to be creatures of some sort someday. There's a star I made for Christmas one year. There's a Christmas tree in there, a couple Christmas trees. Something flat, so on and so forth. Little tiny things to make little ornaments. So those are the rolled paper ornaments. Bottom drawer. These are paper projects that I made when I was mostly a card maker. And they're little thank you, miniature thank you notes in little boxes. Learn that from somebody who sells Stampin' Up. They are great for learning box stuff. This is called the ribbon drawer, although I don't own a lot of ribbon ribbon. But I use them for the little rolled um, Christmas ornaments. So that's that. This is tissue paper stamped, printed, bought, happy mail, jelly printed. You name it, it's in there. I, when I carve stamps, I try to stamp some tissue paper from the stamps that I've carved. And then wrap stuff up, I send to people in them. These are miscellaneous items. Hang on a second, I gotta sit down. Sorry, I'm bending over and bending over and bending over. All right, so this is miscellaneous projects. I bought these for $1.50 in the Michaels bin. I'm not one for coloring books. It doesn't interest me. But I thought the little tags were cute, and they would give me inspiration on how to make my own. Wooden frames. Got them for less than a dollar at Michaels. Little tiny card boxes that were gifted to me. There's all kinds of miscellaneous... Uh, little miniature frames that can be painted and little pictures can be put in those. There's all kinds of miscellaneous stuff in there. This is thread. Now I'm not a sewer. My mother was a sewer and when she passed away I was cleaning out this room to make it my own craft room and this used to be her sewing room so I took the thread out put it in another room to save it for an estate sale. I was looking for thread one day I was like oh how stupid am I? I can go back there and get some. And I took all the thread that she had and I put it in this drawer. So this is all the thread that was left in the house when we came to move in here. And I'm going to save it. And I've been using it. So it will get used eventually. I don't know if my lifetime or two or three more, but <laughs> it'll get used. And evidently, it has become evident to me that I have a fetish for metal containers. <laughs> Every time I see these... Um, what was it, Art C? Every time I see these containers, these metal containers on sale in clearance, this is a buck ninety-nine, and I think I got it for seventy-five cents, a dollar, something like that. It was on sale. Um, I picked them up. Not that I put anything in them or do anything with them. I just feel compelled to go buy them. I like these because they have the little book inside them. You decorate the outside and the little book is on the inside. And you can hear it. Yay! So I have all different shapes and sizes of them. 
because for some reason I'm a pack rat of little metal tins. This is just awful. <laughs> These are post-it notes and business cards from when I was a personal chef. So I, I had... I had these printed, a friend did them to me who had a print shop for next to nothing, and I would put them on the bills or I'd put them on recipes I would leave on the counter for my clients so they would know I'd been there. You know, there's tons of them. And then, of course, I go and pick up the random little color ones, like the yellow ones with my name on them, it's not enough. <laughs> I just had to have more. Look, Halloween stuff. Watermelon, which is one of my favorite fruits. Um, there they all are. They're just all shapes and sizes and colors of post-it notes. I already did... Oh, these are the art envelopes. Cindy Utter moved from New York to South Carolina. And when she was cleaning stuff out, she sent me this gargantuan box of envelopes and tags. So I gave all the tags that she sent to me their own drawer and there's some really cute things in here and some of the stuff was in bags which I loved and, uh, and I clipped some stuff together and I love all these envelopes and I am using them in journals even though I'm really not a journaler but I was told by somebody that I need to put interesting envelopes to put tags and all kinds of cool stuff in them so I've been trying to do that more often here's the tags that came with the envelopes they have their own drawer some of them are rubber banded. I tried to put some stuff that was alike together because they were stored in a shoebox earlier. But I like being able to uh, just scoot the chair over and pick something out of the drawer. Right now I gotta stand up. All right, this stuff is stuff I found the other day when I cleaned out the other half of the room. And these are oil pastels. I don't use oil pastels, but for some reason I have accumulated oil pastels. There's one, two, three containers of them and a baggie full of them. Don't use them. All right, here is the the metal magazine thing, and it, it you know it goes sideways. It's in there sideways. So this is what I do. I take the plastic folders that had a top on them, and I cut the top off, and then I just slip papers in them. This one's um, paper that I got from Carla, Cage Fish. These are envelopes. In here back behind here what is this these are shipping labels and my logo from my last business these are just miscellaneous painting papers this these are embellishments and different kind of fun things from the pocket letter swap I belong to these are tickets from Dollar Tree I don't know why I got them I just don't know can't explain it Paper flowers down the Carlo way. No, not the Carlo way, the Shannon Green way. Mm -hmm. Empty. Oh my God. Empty. Oh, it's a sin. And then the back here has nothing but chipboard and large pieces of sturdy cardboard for bookmaking. Then we look over here. These are the four paper mache boxes. These hold my bookmaking things. Posts, rings, elastics, wax, wax threads, needles, and thread. This one is empty. There's nothing in there. Then I have small projects sitting on top of stuff. You know, no flat surface is safe. <laughs> There's all the little mini books. And I have to show one in particular. I'm standing on my tippy toes. Look at that. Debbie Cork. Need I say more? No. All right. Slowly, slowly, slowly. There are the flipping photo blocks that were in previous videos. These are project holders when I'm working on something. I put them in here for filming. Here are the little three drawer stair light cubes from Walmart. The first one has styro stamps. These are all my mark making tools and stamps that I made from things from the hardware store. These are toothpicks that are laid into square. This was carved in a nice fat piece of foam. I don't remember where I got the foam from, but I wish I could find more of it. I like it much better than the fun foam. Um, you know, mark making tools. Combs from Dollar Tree. There's like 15 or 20 combs in the thing for a buck. Can't beat that. There's really no organization to this right here. 
my carving tools. These are the tools that I use to carve for Carve December. Here's the Speedy Carve tools. I have a set of Japanese carving tools here. This is the Speedball book for the print set that I bought. There's the Lino Cut or Lino Cut, however you say it. One of the blocks that I tried out. It was very fun. I also cut myself. <laughs> These are Japanese cutting tools my dad has had since 1970 when I went through his garage. I taped the word save on it so I would remember not to throw them away. They look pretty battered, but they still work. Down below are what I call my handmade stamps. These are design elements. These do not fall into the nature category. Circles, squares, triangles, the word love, um, you know, miscellaneous stuff that makes no sense. But I have Christmas. Where's the bunny? I have an Easter bunny in here somewhere. I wonder where he is. Easter bunny! Okay, I can't find the Easter bunny. There's a Christmas ornament that I carved a large ball. Anyway, so that's my stamps from December Carve. And here are my handmade stamps that are kind of the nature category, although Celtic, Celtic Knot is not really nature. Uh, neither's the house, but that's where it's going to stay. So there's food, flowers, the sun, Christmas trees. Where is that Easter bunny? Must have popped away. All right, so that's what's in that drawer. Bottom drawer is, front part is stickles, and I just took a piece of cardboard I had in one of my cardboard drawers, cut it to the same height as the drawer, and shoved all the stickles in here. I tried to sit them up right. The drawer is not deep enough, nor is it deep enough to set up the, all the Martha Stewart glitters. So that's why that's in there like that. Top here are my dry adhesive, except for the Tombow, um, you know, stamp uh, rolls of tape for the ATG gun, the red tape, two-sided tapes, anything like that. Next are the blending tools, which I rarely use. These are mark making tools that came from Cindy Utter. She sent me a bunch of them in an envelope, and so there were so many of them I could not put them in another drawer. So they get a drawer of their own. Look at that. I'm a bad crafter. All right, here are my large tools. These are jewelry pliers. These are, oh, what's this one? You know, I know the name of this silly thing. Anyway, the punch. So I have this, and then I've got other kinds of specialty punches, and this makes the, oh, this makes that thing right there that goes in the top of a, it goes like this, in the, so you can hang stuff on a rack, through a peg rack. You know, I have stuff like that. A ball-peen hammer's in here. Love ball-peen hammers. The bottom section are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of my business postcards when I was a personal chef and I needed to advertise myself in a neighborhood. I sent out postcards and this is nothing but postcards. I don't buy index cards. What I do is I cut these things down and use them for iCADs. All right, hang on. Let me sit down again. All right, this is the wood bookshelf that my husband and I have had probably 35, nearly 40 years. It's been painted, stripped, repainted, stripped, repainted, stripped a million times. And finally I said, eh, let it look the way it does. It looks crappy and I like it. All right, so down here on the very bottom are some notebooks. These are the notebooks that I did not show you in the organizational video. The white one on the end has nothing but uh, page protectors, baseball cards, um, you know, the nine slots, ATC size stuff. The big fat dark one in the middle is, there are pocket letters that from my exchange when I belong to it. This green one it, are large, are, no, those are small stencils and they have different size pocket protectors in there with the small stencils. Then there's the large stencils which are 6x6, 6x8s. Six, six the 12x12s 12 12, are on the other side of the room. Then the bottom part is nothing but scrapbook paper. I tried laying the, uh, tried setting them upright, but they kept bending over, and I took everything I had to shove them over to the side, but then it was a nuisance. Every time you took one out, the rest of them slumped over, and I got tired of doing that. So what I did was I took a black Sharpie and wrote on the end the manufacturer, the color, uh, some kind of a description so I would know what's in there, and so far it's working great. There are 40-some-odd packs 
of scrapbook paper. I will never use them all. Up above are some of the notebooks I've already showed you guys. The turquoise one are bead patterns and things that I needed to save in pocket protectors, sheet protectors. There's my goober arrow so I don't dump all my stuff out of the pockets. The ATC postcard minis is in the green one and the it looks blue on your screen but it's actually purple is the ICAD 2017. Sorry the light's bad. We're having a cloudy day. The rest of this is cardstock, colored cardstock, which are in job ticket holders that a mechanic will use when he puts your ticket in it to keep it from getting greasy and lost because they can slide your keys down in there and it goes with your bill. I found those on Amazon. Office Depot has them, but it is less expensive to order them on Amazon than it is to go in. I've already done it, and they were $3 more when you actually go into Office Depot. I was not happy, and I didn't buy any. Then I went home and ordered them from Amazon and saved $6. Okay, so that's that. Oh, the very, oh, over here. I told you guys before I would tell you, explain to you what these are. These are, let me move this out of the way. These are photo frames. They're acrylic photo frames, and they look like drawers. Isn't that cool? There was a giant box inside here, and the advertisement was on, you know, the back side of it. And all you do is take your box out, and then you put your photo in there and slide the box, box back in. And it has a little hole in the back, and then you can hang this plastic photo box on it. So I saw that somebody made a cabinet out of a wooden piece from Michael's, and then they put wooden dowels, two sets of wooden dowels per drawer, drilled holes in the side, put the dowels in, and then you slide this in, and the dowels hold your stuff in. Yes, they can come undone. Yes, they can fall out, but I remember that the drawers will fall out if I pull on them too quickly, too hard, but that rarely, and I mean rarely, ever happens because I know I have to pick them up. <laughs> I put that in backwards. Nope, there's no label on it. I try to label these, but, you know, I don't have labels for everything because I have some categories mixed in together. There are some more notebooks I did not show you guys in the organizational video. I have some Genevieve um, templates for different kinds of things that she makes. And there they are right there. I put them each in their own notebook so I can find all the pieces and the instructions. Any other stuff I run off for them. Any extra papers. I leave them inside these notebooks. Okay, I think, let me move down and let me scoot my chair back to the other side of the room without hitting anything. It's a miracle. Okay, so there is that side of the room. There's no hollow core door. There's no more um, Michael's white cubes. And I like this arrangement. It works for me for now, but you know, three days from now, I may just tear the whole thing up and start all over again. <laughs> When I empty drawers out, it will get more manageable, and that way I can not have so much stuff crammed in some of the other drawers, like the napkins. If I don't want to get rid of the napkins and I find a smaller drawer, there will be napkin drawer A, napkin drawer B. You know, I can divide the dinner napkins from the cocktail napkins, whatever. But the point is, is that I can find stuff, and my favorite tool in this whole room is my P-Touch because this really helps me. Yes, there are things that still don't have labels, but I will get there eventually. All right, so this is the this is the hallway wall of the room, and next I will do the back side of the room and the other side. So there'll be a part two. I know, I know, I hate doing parts, but this is the only way I can do it. Alrighty, stay tuned for part two. Bye.